Major breaking news. Judge Roger Benitez has declared that California's quote-unquote assault weapon ban is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment and declared that it cannot be enforced. He has given the state of California 10 days to seek a stay from the Ninth Circuit, but unlike Duncan versus Bonta, I do not believe Miller versus Bonta has been to the Ninth Circuit before, so I do not think they can play that on bonk game again in this assault weapon case. Again, metaphor or euphemism for semi-automatic rifle that everyone in America owns. Okay, folks, let's talk about it when we get back. Hey, folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, and author of Disarm, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. All right, major breaking news, Judge Roger Benitez has issued his decision in Miller v. Bonta. It's 79 pages long. It is chalk full of references, historical reference. And frankly, if you read his opinion and you follow the Four Boxes Diner, you will be extremely happy that there's a lot of similarities between the lessons of the Four Boxes Diner and the opinion of Judge Benitez. Although I'm sure he's much smarter than I am and has figured all this out without any benefit for me, the good news is basically our minds are tracking the same. He starts out with his opinion as he knocks out California's assault weapon man with the following, quote, Like the Bowie knife, which was commonly carried by citizens and soldiers in the 1800s, quote-unquote assault weapons are dangerous but useful. But unlike the Bowie knife, the United States Supreme Court has said, quote, there is a long tradition of widespread lawful gun ownership by private individuals in this country, period, close quote. What Supreme Court case did Judge Benitez just quote to? You guessed it, Staples versus United States. As we've talked about, if you don't rely on staples, you're not paying attention to the Second Amendment jurisprudence, and he leads right off with the Staples versus United States case, which involved even Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That was from 1994, and he starts right off at the top, hitting hard against this gun ban. Then he goes on to say, uh, and he quotes the following very powerful language. He says, as judges, it is not our goal, it's not our purpose as judges to be policy legislators, which the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, many of them at least, have not figured that out. This is what he writes. He quotes James Ho, uh, um, in the uh, ninth, uh, who's out of the Fifth Circuit in the Rahimi case. This is what he says. Uh, These are the decisions this court is bound to apply, meaning the Supreme Court precedents. Then he goes on to say, it's our duty as judges to interpret the Constitution based on the text and original understanding of the relevant provision, not on public policy considerations or worse, fear of public opprobrium or criticism from the political branches. So Judge Benitez is saying, look, I don't care, you Gavin Newsom. You want to complain about my decisions interpreting the Second Amendment? Well, who cares? You're just part of the political branches. Do your thing, but you're not going to touch our Bill of Rights, which has been enshrined by the Founding Fathers. And if you want to try to amend it, have at it. Good luck with it. It ain't going to happen. But until then, the Second Amendment is the law of the land. It is a fundamental right as set forth by the text of the Second of the text of the Constitution, as well as Supreme Court precedent. Then he goes on, of course, to talk about the AR-15. He says, this case is about California laws that, in contrast to these constitutional principles of the Second Amendment, Make it a crime to acquire and possess many common modern firearms, modern semi-automatic firearms. He goes on to say that modern semi-automatic rifles like the AR-15 platform rifle are widely owned by law-abiding citizens across this country. Other than their looks, the state calls them features or accessories, or features or accessories. These prohibited rifles are virtually the same as all other lawfully possessed rifles. They have the same minimum overall length. They use the same triggers... They have the same barrels and they fire the same velocities as other rifles and the same from the same magazines and they fire the same ammunition at the same rate of fire. What is it then that animates the state's criminalization of possessing certain rifles as quote unquote assault weapons? Judge Benitez asks. He then goes on to say it is that similar rifles have been used in some mass shootings and that by virtue of this law of California's, the legislature hoped to keep these modern weapons out of the hands of mass shooters. The California legislature at the time in the past when the lower courts did not recognize the individual's right to keep arms and in a state that has no constitutional analog to the Second Amendment, balanced away, balanced that interest above and against its law-abiding citizens who wanted these firearms for self-defense. Then Judge Benitez goes on to say, that was then, but not today. 
because today the Supreme Court has very clearly ended modern interest balancing when it comes to the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment, the court has said, and if you follow the four boxes, Diner, this is going to be a quote you've heard before from Justice Scalia and Heller. Judge Benitez relies on it. This is what he says. Benitez says, the Second Amendment, the Supreme Court has said, quote, is the very product, is the very product of an interest balancing by the people and it surely elevates above all other interests, the right of law-abiding, responsible citizens to use arms for self-defense. That was in Bruin. That was in Bruin. And it goes on to say, it is this balance struck by the traditions of the American people that demands our unqualified deference. And as you know, Justice Scalia said exactly that, as Benitez notes here, that it is the product of interest balancing by the founding fathers that gave rise to the Second Amendment itself. He points that out at the end of Heller. Very powerful language. And Judge Benitez strikes the right tone here by embracing that concept. He then goes on to say exactly what he needs to say, which is the American tradition is rich and deep in protecting a citizen's enduring right to keep and bear common arms, common arms, like rifle shotguns and pistols. However, among the American tradition of firearm ownership, there is nothing, nothing like California's prohibition on rifles, shotguns, and handguns based on their looks or attributes. Here, the assault weapon prohibition has no historical pedigree, and it is extreme. Yes, it is. Exactly right, Judge Benitez. He goes on to say, even today, neither the United States Congress nor most states impose such prohibitions on modern semi-automatic arms. In contrast, laws that punish criminal acts committed with any gun, like the crime of assault with a deadly weapon, remain perfectly constitutional. Those criminal laws are not at issue here. Exactly right. You punish the act, the misuse of the firearm, and you don't ban the firearm. It also, of course, speaks to the issue in the Sony case involving the VCR and the Betamax, right? where there's an attempt to ban the VCR and the Betamax in a series of lawsuits on the grounds that someone could misuse a VCR or a Betamax by either engaging and watching illegal pornography or illegal copywriting under federal law. You're not allowed to copyright. And there was concern about this. And now Justice Stevens, who's no friend of the Second Amendment, Justice Stevens actually wrote an opinion in Sony that says, just because someone can misuse a VCR doesn't mean it's not protected. And as Justice Stevens said, the fact that you can have lawful uses of the VCR and the Betamax is all it takes to protect it. So too, as Judge Benitez points out here, the same with guns. Just because someone can misuse a gun, the fact that guns have lawful, important uses uh, makes it, of course, a lawful product, and that's a no-brainer. By the way, he has some very powerful language here criticizing, in my view, implicitly the media. He goes on to say, for example, that California says criminals already have and favor using guns described as assault weapons. But here's the kicker. Here's what Judge Benitez says. He kill, kills this one. Quote, rather than being outgunned, many citizens want these same firearms as a defense against criminal attacks. Americans today own 24.4 million modern rifles, i.e. AR-15 platform and AK-47 platform rifles, according to the state's expert. Do you hear what he said? Judge Benita says, hey, I'm just going to ask the California expert on this. And the California expert says, yeah, 24.4 million rifles of this type, AK AK-47s, AR-15s, that makes it in common use for lawful purposes, okay? Then he goes on to say, of the AR-15 rifle owner surveyed, 61% have said one reason they acquired the gun is for home defense. Consequently, while criminals already have these modern semi-automatics, the state of California prohibits its citizens from buying and possessing the same guns for self-defense. At the same time, these firearms are commonly possessed, commonly possessed, exactly right, commonly possessed. Possession of a gun is the use of a gun. In common use, in common possession, they are one and the same. That gun on your nightstand that you never touch is being used every night for self-defense even if you don't touch it because it's ready like a fire hydrant, like a fire extinguisher, like a life insurance policy, like a homeowner's policy. You are using it even if you don't have to deploy it. Exactly right, Judge Benitez. He has nailed it yet again in this opinion. He goes on to say that consequently, while criminals already have these modern semi-automatics, the state prohibits its citizens from buying and possessing the same guns for self-defense. Basically, he's saying this is crazy. This is crazy. And of course, most importantly, it doesn't matter if it's crazy or not. It's unconstitutional. Then he goes on to talk about, and this is the, the, I actually thought this was quite amusing. He wrote this. He actually makes reference to trial testimony of hoodlums. Judge Benita says that studies long cited by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 
the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, no, fit, no friend, no friend of the Second Amendment, says there are between 500 and 3 million defensive gun uses in the United States every single year. CDC, Judge Benitez quotes it, okay? Don't need to prove this, right? We don't need to win this, but it's nice to show it's true, helpful as a matter of optics, but legally speaking, it doesn't matter because remember, we the people get to decide what we consider to be arms. That's what Heller says. For whatever reason, Americans pick handguns. Okay, for whatever reason, we pick AR-15s. For whatever reason, we pick AK-47s and the same. We get to pick it because we are the people. We the people get to pick. They the go government doesn't get to pick. And Judge Benitez makes this exact point. He points out that California says, hey, People can have other guns, other types of guns and other weapons to protect themselves. And Judge Benitez here says what we've talked about on this channel before. He quotes Heller and says, that is a BS argument because the U.S. Supreme Court in Heller itself said, it is no defense for the government to say that because you have access to other guns, we can ban these guns. In Heller, they said just because the D.C. residents had access to firearms in the form of rifles and shotguns, i.e. long guns, D.C. argued in Heller that they could ban handguns. And the Supreme Court says, no, you can't. No, no, no. No can do. That is not a viable argument for banning any kind of firearm. That is exactly what the Supreme Court said, and that is what J Judge Benitez embraced. He then go on, went on and actually illustrated the point a little further than even the Supreme Court did in Heller by saying, hey, think about this. This is like saying, hey, we want to ban under the First Amendment right to free speech. We want to ban a thousand of these books. We don't like any of Mark Smith's books. We're going to ban them. And don't complain to us because there's lots of other books you can read about guns and the gun history. Obviously, that cannot work. You can't ban some books under the First Amendment because there are other things that people can read. That is not an argument. You'd be laughed out of court and Judge Benitez makes this exact point and it's a powerful one. A few other key points Judge Benitez hit the ball uh, out of the park on. One thing he says, and this is very important, we've talked a little bit about how the historic, remember, Heller did the same methodology as Bruin and actually Judge Benitez acknowledges this because he specifically says, this is what Judge Benitez is right. It sounds like it is right, right, out of the Four Boxes Diner. Because here's what it says, quote, it is the same text, history, and tradition standard the court used in Heller and McDonald. You hear what I just said? Under Bruin, the government must affirmatively prove that its firearm regulation is part of a constitutionally historical tradition. Constitutional historical tradition. It is the same text, history, and tradition standard the court used in Heller and McDonald. Exactly right. Exactly right. Only difference is that Bruin really unequivocally shut down all interest balancing tiers of scrutiny forever. That was the change between Bruin and, and, and Heller. It, it eliminated any ambiguity about that question, which there really wasn't ambiguity, but, but the lower courts pretended there was. So the point is, this is exactly what he have been saying, that the Heller text first, once a modern gun control law is implicated by the text, the burden shifts to the government to show a historical tradition of some sort of gun law that is analogous to the modern gun control law. If they can't do it, the government loses. Text and then history, okay? That is exactly what Judge Benitez says is the test here. Bruin and Heller are the same. And here's the thing, that's the methodology. But there is a legal test, a legal test that it gives rise under Heller, dealing with arms ban. If a firearm is in common use by Americans for lawful purposes, it cannot be banned. The reason why it cannot be banned is the only conceivable types of guns, the only conceivable types of guns that can be banned are those that are dangerous and unusual. And by definition, AR-15s, AK-47s, magazines hold more 10 rounds, and so on and so on and so on. These are obviously in common use because they far exceed the 200,000 stun guns that were possessed by Americans in the Caetano case in 2016. So everything we're talking about right now in modern day fights are in common use and cannot possibly be banned under the legal standard. This is why the in common use test for lawful purposes is a very, very helpful standard. Again, there may be other types of weapons that can be protected in the future in other contexts, but that's not our fight now. Our fight today, for those of you who don't like the in common use test slash dangerous and unusual test, is we must win at the Supreme Court on all these levels. The AR-15, the AK-47, the magazines, we have to win these now 
before we can move on to other things. If we don't win these basic building blocks, it doesn't make sense to talk about anything else because again, you got to hit the little ones first before you hit anything bigger. Makes sense? That's the key. Now, the good news is Judge Benitez spanks California. He spanks California for playing games here. Now, we've talked about how the test under Heller is dangerous and unusual. It's dangerous and unusual. But we've talked about on this channel before that the anti-gunners always try to play a game game called dangerous or unusual because they cite to an English commentator named William Blackstone in one of his books, he says dangerous or unusual. That appears to be a typographical error. It makes no sense. Nevertheless, the English commentator of William Blackstone is helpful to understand in American law because Americans adopted many of the English traditions. However, the American right to keep and bear arms was always understood to be broader than the English traditions. So whatever Blackstone said in England in his commentaries about dangerous dangerous or unusual weapons, the Supreme Court says dangerous and unusual conjunctive. You have to beat both before the government can possibly ban it, which means the only way the government can ban an AR-15 is to show it's dangerous and unusual conjunctive. So on page uh, uh, on page nine of his opinion, uh, Judge Benitez specifically points this out. He says, hey, hey, it says, the Supreme Court has carefully used the phrase dangerous and unusual arms. While the state of California throughout its briefing, throughout its briefing refers to dangerous or unusual arms. That the state would advocate such a position is disheartening, which is basically saying, I'm not very happy with you. I don't trust you. You're not credible. It's a signal. When he says the state of California would advocate such a position is disheartening. Justice Alito, it goes on to say, Justice Alito took pains to point out that this is a conjunctive test, conjunctive test, either it's both right and it's conjunctive disjunctive is or and he says and that's what benita says quote he's, he's quoting alito here quote as the per curiam opinion recognizes this is a conjunctive test a weapon may not be banned unless it is both dangerous and unusual if heller tells us anything it is that firearms cannot be categorically prohibited just because they are dangerous that is Justice Alito being quoted by Justice uh, by Judge Benitez, uh, powerful language and correct. Then Judge Benitez goes on and points out that the state has had ample time to find evidence and historical analogs to try to justify their bans. This is what he writes. He says, look, the state of California has been given generous time and leeway to satisfy its new burden, which is not really a new burden under Heller. It's an old burden, but nevertheless, let's set that issue aside. Additional time to study history is not needed. The state's experts have been studying historic firearm regulations for more than 20 years. Exactly right. Exactly right. Remember, I've taught you, we do not need expert testimony at all in any of these gun ban cases. We don't need them in these cases because how much expert testimony was there in Heller? That would be zero. How much expert testimony was there in McDonald? That would be zero. How much expert testimony about the history of firearms and the like was there in Catano? That would be zero. How much expert testimony was there in the history of firearms and the like in Bruin? That would be zero. So why on earth are people out there, including in the Second Amendment community, by the way, and I think this is a mistake, and I've told people in the Second Amendment community, this is a mistake. Why are you guys going out there and embrace an expert testimony in the Second Amendment community. Do not do that. It is a sucker's game. You're playing in the state of California and all the anti-gunner states. You are playing a game. You cannot win because if a, if, if, if a, if a court asks for this, they've already telling you they don't like Bruin or Heller and they're going to rule against you. Do not waste your money and time and expert on experts because they will not pay off. And I'm glad to say that Benitez makes the observation, hey, the state's experts have had 20 years and have come up with nada, nada. By the way, again, he didn't need to do that. He could have just applied the income use of, Teller, of Heller. Nevertheless, Judge Benitez did do a good job. He showed his work and proved, hey, there's no basis for banning any of these firearms in American law, period, full stop. And he's completely right. The other point I want to make here uh, as I wrap up is he does point out that 1791 is the relevant time period and not, not 1868. He says, quote, Bruin teaches that the most significant historical evidence comes from 1791 and secondarily 1868 for the Second Amendment and other protections of the Bill of Rights. Quote, constitutional rights are enshrined with the scope they were understood to have when the people adopted them. The Second Amendment was adopted in 1791. Exactly right. Powerful language from Judge Benitez. Sounds very familiar to a powerful uh, YouTube article uh, by a handsome YouTuber in the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy. Uh, so there you have it. I'm glad that the wisdom is spreading and I'm glad we are learning from Judge Benitez and more. I will wrap up with the conclusion of Judge Benitez. Powerful language. This is what he writes at the end in his conclusion. Quote, there is only one policy enshrined in the Bill of Rights. 
guns and ammunition in the hands of criminals, tyrants, and terrorists are dangerous. Guns in the hands of law-abiding and responsible citizens are necessary, necessary. To give full life to the core right of self-defense, every law-abiding and responsible individual citizen has a constitutionally protected right to keep and bear arms commonly owned and kept for lawful purposes. Bingo, exactly right. In early America and today, the Second Amendment right of self-preservation permits a citizen to repel force by force, to repel force by force when the intervention of society in his behalf may be too late to prevent that injury. And he quotes, ready for this? Cesar Beccaria, footnote 245, Cesar Beccaria. Have you heard that, that Italian Enlightenment criminologist Cesar Beccaria before? I think you have, because if you watch the Four Boxes Diner, you know all about it, and I'm happy to report on footnote four, on footnote 245, here we have Judge Benitez relying upon and quoting Cesar Beccaria. Bingo, exactly right. Uh, that's what we want to see. He goes on to say that unfortunately governments tend to restrict the right of armed self-defense, but punishing every good citizen because bad ones misuse a gun offends the Constitution. Exactly right. So bottom line is powerful, another powerful decision in support of the Second Amendment and dead on when it comes to the law. Uh, he got to the right outcome 100%. Judge Benitez did. Congratulations to him and to the lawyers involved in that case. Uh, the only thing is, of course, he's given the state 10 days to seek a stay of this ruling. They will otherwise enjoin that law. So don't forget to subscribe to the Four Boxes Diner. I hope you learned something today or today. Don't forget to follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner. And we will see you again soon at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.